We break the devil's bondage over our lives. And I just want to, to do kind of an overview and then say something and we close as the Lord will lead. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My heart is filled with worship to the Lord. My heart is filled, filled with honor to the King of Kings. His presence, the presence of God. You can never buy it, you cannot manufacture it, you can never work it out. But it is manifested when people's hearts are longing for him. If you seek him, you will find him. You seek him, you will find him. And so I'll mention one or two things that we mentioned last time. Chapter 6 of the book of Judges. Is, it begins with an anticlimax. The children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. So all evil that is done is done in the sight of the Lord. Any wickedness that we commit, it's in the presence of the Lord. And so they did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. So they did evil. And the Lord, not the devil, not the devil. Because even if they tried to bind the devil, he would not be bound. Nothing would change. The Lord delivered them into the hands of Midian. The Midian knights. For how many years? For seven years they are in bondage. These are people that are in the promised land. They are in the land that God had promised them. But they sinned in the promised land. It's dangerous when you sin within the promised land. When you are outside the promised land, the Lord will still deal with you. But when you are in the promised land, you also lose, you lose your rights. In the promised land and instead of being the boss you become you become a slave and so for seven years these people are suffering and it says the hand of the Midians prevailed against Israel and because of the Midianites the children of Israel made them dens which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds these people are living in dens like animals they left their houses. They left their houses. What was the reason? They had sinned against the Lord. They had done evil in the sight of the Lord. Any evil done is in the sight of the Lord. And sin has sin has consequences. Sin always has consequences. So when you if you decide to sin, there will be repercussions. There will be, there'll be a payment for it. So they are oppressed because they've sinned against the Lord. And the armies came and encamped against them. And great multitude, verse 5 talks about great multitudes that came. Uh, they came even with their cattle because they, are, they have come to settle. But they not only come to settle, but whenever the children of Israel plant, plant their, their, their crops, these people come and destroy it. And the Bible says they were greatly impoverished because of the Midians. Who are these impoverished? They are the servants of the Lord. They are the people that have the promise of God. It should not be so. Because they have the promise of God. They should be living a different life. But now they are impoverished. But as verse 7, which is very crucial. 
The Bible says, and it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites, that the Lord sent a, prof a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus says the Lord, God of Israel, I brought you up out of Egypt and brought you forth out of the house of bondage. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of the op all that oppressed you. And I drove them out from before you and gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell, but ye have not obeyed my voice. When, when there is sin in a nation, when there is, a, there is sin in a people, when there is sin in a, fa in a family, there will be consequences. There will always be consequences and every sin that is done is in the presence of God. Nothing is done outside the presence of God because God sees all things. He knows all things. He understands all things. And I would like us to examine ourselves today because it's important to check your life. Things don't just happen. Life doesn't just happen. Life will be a result of choices that people make. And one of the choices you must make is to decide who your God is. If you decide Jehovah is your God, then you have to go by the constitution. You've got to live according to the rules and regulations that are in the kingdom of God because this the God God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom it's not a democracy God decrees and you don't have time to come in and uh, tell him to change anything because he will not change he says I am the Lord I change not God never changes and so when people, when nations, when families sin against God, there will be consequences. The world today is in the state it is because of sinning against God. This coronavirus is part of it, part of the system, part of the evil that comes upon people when they don't serve God. Because God released the children of Israel whom he loved into the hands of their enemies. I pray that God delivers you today in case you're in the hands of the enemy that the Lord will deliver you but he will deliver you as you call upon his name. Just like we as a people and we as families we as nations, we as tribes of people, when there is sin, it will affect each and every one of us. Something will need to be done. And I look at our country and many other countries, and I find unless something is done, there will be terrible consequences. There will be terrible consequences consequences why are you preaching negative I'm not preaching negative I've got to preach the truth we are in him that is true and when he speaks you cannot amend his constitution you cannot change anything here you cannot improve anything here in Kenya we want to improve our constitution this one has no place for improvement because it is perfect. It is eternal. And so when nations, and when this nation of Kenya, when it sins and there's wickedness and the other nations, when people sin against God, there will be consequences 
We are seeing it. We are already seeing it among ourselves. We are already seeing it in our nation. Because there is, we cannot pretend. There is no sin in this nation. There is great sin and even great sin in the church. Because when the church cannot be differentiated, when you cannot tell which is a Christian meeting and a satanic meeting, where sinners stand and they say, Bwana asifiwe, asifiwe tena. And all the people say amen, even the Christians. Unajua nasifu bwana gani? Do you know the Lord is, is, is praising? Because a person praises the Lord he has submitted to. And so that's that diluting of the gospel. When I see you with that thing, it irritates me. Because it's, it, it's meant to praise God, but this person is not really praising God. He wants to find a way of communicating. You're not going to take the name of the Lord in vain. You don't take the names, the name of the Lord in vain. If you are praising God, then it's got to be from the heart. It's got to be a serious business. It must not be used in campaigns. The name of the Lord is an exclusive name. It's a strong tower. You don't to take the name of the Lord in vain. You don't keep on mentioning it in vain. You don't use it in your jokes. Neither do you need, need to change to use it in your entertainments. The name of Jehovah is a great name that needs to be honored. And so when we see all the corruption in our nation, when we see all the bribery which is which has become now you sure but paying a bribery the people that demand bribery they demand it like it's their salary when a country is in a state like that when there is violence we're hearing of people killing their wives murdering their wives and their children Strange enough also wives killing their husbands, girls killing their boyfriends. Violence that has filled the nations. Because unless we submit to Jehovah, we will live in wickedness. Wickedness shows who we are. Wickedness describes you. Wickedness describes the people that live in a country. Because if there is that wickedness that shows that is how those people are. God hates sin. God hates wickedness. When we see the immorality that is in the world and in this nation. Where the church is compromising. Where preachers are ab able to do whatever they want. And people still come and sit to listen. Because while you're listening to such a person, you live that way also. Most likely. Either you live that way or there's something wrong with you. The immorality is in our schools. The lesbianism. Because it's like we are, we are burying our heads in the sand. But this is what's happening. Teachers are having problems with students. Students getting involved in you know, homosexuality, in lesbianism, in drugs. That's the state of our nation. We have leaders that are doing evil things and they, they brag about it. Having side, side wives. Cheating. Cheating and 
talk about it as though it's, it's a great thing. It's not. Sin will never be great in the eyes of the Lord. When the altar, even the altars that we have erected, raised for the Lord, become altars of materialism, where we preach materialism, we practice materialism, we rob the poor to become rich ourselves. And saying it's because we are servants of the Lord. The servants of the Lord are not to be covetous. Place of materialism, promote materialism. Talk about materialism instead of talking about Jehovah. When the state is like that, when the poor is oppressed, let me talk about Kenya. We are a country of shame where the poor is greatly oppressed and cash is distributed in campaign meetings as though it was paper. When we are in a state of where drunkenness has become a normal thing, our girls get into drunkenness and young men getting into drunkenness, and all kinds of things. House parties that are demonic. And parents will let their children, teenage girls and boys, go for house parties and all kinds of wickedness. What is wrong with our parents? The parent is in a worse state than the child then. When there is that kind of a life, when the children are neglected, children don't matter much now. We have a child's children's act. But it doesn't help much. Because any act that is not in, in agreement with this act is just going to mess up. And we pass rules that are in agreement with the UN. But if they are not in, in agreement with this word of God, they are not going to be of much help. So we've neglected the children. Some of them because we've gone out making money. We don't have time for them. We want them to have a good life. We want to give them a good life. The best life you can give a child is when you train him in the word of God. Bible says train up a child the way he shall go. And when he is old, he will never depart, it, depart from it. That means the time to mold a person is when they are children. It's when they are young. Because if you don't mold that, them that time, they will become what you what, what, what you let them become. For when they are old, even when they are old, they've been trained to steal. Even when they are old, they are stealing. They've been trained to be violent. Even when they are old, they are going to be violent. That's why we are having a lot of young men that cannot keep, keep a wife. Because they've learned the way of violence. And the ladies of today say we will not be mistreated. We are women. We are called women. We are called a girl child. We take care of ourselves. And men are finding it difficult now. But that doesn't help. This is the only way to train up the children of this nation. This word is the only hope for this nation. The children of this nation, their hope is this word. Because we are being dictated from, from the West. 
where children have been neglected. We need to receive instruction from above because that's where we belong. For when there is this sin, when there is abortion, because we are letting children, people live as they wish, have sex like animals. So when the girls get pregnant, we want to abort. We want them to abort. We want to shed that innocent blood. In these abortion clinics, which are actually satanic altars. So if you go there to flash out, as some of them call it, to flash out that child, you have gone to worship the devil. You are offering yourself to the devil. You are offering blood sacrifice to the devil. You've already covenanted yourself to him. children of Israel sinned against the Lord and the Lord gave them over to Midians Kenyans sinned against the Lord and the Lord gave them over to all kinds of things may the Lord help us to open our eyes and for Christians to open our eyes and for us ministers of the gospel to open our eyes We are not to compromise with the world. Our fathers who were before us, they never compromised with the world. They demonstrated it by with their own lives. They paid, they were prepared to pay the ultimate price for the sake of the name of the Lord and for the sake of holiness. children we have killed and there are so many and it's not just the abortionists who are doing it but other people that have decided to worship the devil and they've got to offer sacrifices that innocent blood that innocent blood is crying from the soil it cannot be quiet Cain thought after he kills up his brother. He thought his brother was going, that was the end. But he heard the voice of the Lord speaking to him. The voice of the Lord said to him, the voice, I can hear the cry of your brother's blood. Friends, blood cannot keep quiet. Blood speaks. I hear the voice of your brother's blood. And Cain is in his arrogance. Just like the people of his, of his, of his family will say today. Am I my brother's keeper? Must I be responsible? He didn't care. And they don't care. But the judgment of God is still there. Judgment awaits the shedding of the blood that is done today. Either by murderers, by abortionists, by those who offer sacrifices of human beings. Judgment awaits you. You better remember that. When we've neglected the family, the family is no longer important. We'd rather do other things and not care about the family. 
not maintain the safety the, because that is the nest the safe haven that God planned for children to grow up in in a family marriage has been reduced to us to a relationship of sex God said it's not good for a man to be alone I will make him a helper a help me we've made it a contract that you can sign today and tomorrow you get rid of it but that's what's not the plan of God he said when you get a wife she's your wife all your life and what God has put together let no man put asunder including the judges the judge has no authority to dissolve a marriage I'm not preaching the laws of Kenya I'm preaching the laws of heaven no judge has a right of dissolving a marriage because marriage is God ordained and you stand there with your wife and you say I take you until death do us part and then you meet another man that looks better healthier stronger than the small one you married and you say I made a mistake There's no place to dissolve a marriage. If you want, you go to God's court. And there, you can do whatever you want. The family is what God designed. That, that, will, that is where the society will grow from. From a family. From a family. Every child is born with a yearning to grow up in a family with a father and a mother, not a mother, a mother and a mother. Not a woman pretending to be a man. There's no way you're going to be a woman if you're born a, man, a woman, a, a man. So when the family is destroyed that is the target and now it's been worked so much the people that seem to matter are tearing their families apart getting other wives getting other other husbands and they are called celebrities celebrity because you've been changing husbands like like jackets bringing up I'm talking about the sin and Israel sinned and Kenya sinned and families sinned against the Lord and the Lord sought them the Lord sought them there are things happening in your life there will be no change until you go to the throne of grace and settle things there with God because sin has consequences. Let nobody cheat you. You steal and nobody sees you, but there will be consequences. You kill somebody and nobody gets to know about it. You will have to face the consequences. Because God will hold you accountable. The promotion of drugs. Parents today, 
parents are living in fear. You don't know whether your child will be on drugs or not. Even in primary schools. Don't tell me that these children cannot be protected. That's why we have governments. So what happens with people, a society of people that are on drugs? People that have become like animals. They've been destroyed. Completely destroyed. Young men that would be building the nation. Destroyed by drugs. Promoted by people that will not even let their children touch it. But they destroy other people's children. There will be consequences. There will be consequences to every one of the things that we practice. The gospel message is about love. Love for one another. In spite of the tribe or race that you come from. The foundation of the gospel. Jesus said this is how people will get to know that you love me. When you have love for one another. That is the foundation. That's what we should declare to the world. That's what we should demonstrate. Love for one another. For he who does not love does not know God. For God is love. What we do how do we expect ourselves to be secure when we are busy promoting promoting lies when leaders tell lies when Christians tell lies and they say I fixed him. Promote tribalism and nepotism. We promote all kinds of evils. Promote lying and liars. Praise liars. Praise murderers. Praise people that should not be praised. When we allow witchcraft, because witchcraft has, has now taken over. We're living in a world of witches. And a lot of them are in different organizations, but they are all witches practicing witchcraft, living all kinds of wickedness. But the Bible tells me the children of Israel called upon the name of the Lord. When they called upon the Lord, the Lord heard them. If you are living in sin today, you need to call upon the name of the Lord. Don't take it as though it's an ordinary thing. And the Lord sent them a prophet. The prophet said to them, I got you out of Egypt. I brought you to this land. And I told you, I gave you instructions. I told you that you're not going to live like these people. You're not going to worship their gods. You're not going to live like they do. And this is God's stand even today. That the people who are called by his name are not going to live like the people of the land. We do not belong to this land. We belong to the kingdom of God. We are citizens of heaven. And God says he doesn't want us to worship the gods that these people worship. But we are to worship him as God. He says, this is the reason why I gave you over. 
And some of us, there are things you need to rectify today if the state of your life or your family or this nation is going to change. How is it going to change when we rectify things? When we stop worshipping other gods? God told them it's because you worship other gods. That's where you get, you go to where you are today. Gideon, as he was, as the angel of the Lord appeared to him, because God will get somebody to be a deliverer. And some of you, God is going to raise you to be deliverers, to speak the message in truth and not in flattery. And that's what happened. God came to Gideon and raised Gideon as the man. When he raised him, he asks if God is with us. Because there are things that should happen when God is with us. And there are things that should not happen when God is with us. So Gideon is saying, you're telling me God is with us. You're telling me that I'm a man of valor. You're saying that God is with you. If God is with me, why are things the way they are today? There are things that will be different when the Lord is with you. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you getting worried? We, we've got to preach the gospel. We've got, some of us have to say it. Somebody has to say it. Somebody has to speak. Whatever it costs. Whatever it costs. He said, if God is with us, if God is with us, if God is with us, Kenyans, where are the miracles that our fathers talked about? Where is the prosperity the freedom fighters talked about? For they said when we determine, when we can determine our own destiny, poverty will end. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about people of the kingdom. People that have come to the kingdom of God. He says, Gideon says the Lord has forsaken us. And he has delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. That is in verse 13. He says God has forsaken us. Please when you find things are not right, don't speak otherwise. If you find it's like God has left you. Because it's possible. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But he didn't say, I will stop you from leaving me. God will not stop you from, from leaving him. But he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. I want to skip a lot of what happened in this, uh, these events. But Gideon was, when this angel came to him, he offered a sacrifice. There was an outer race for Jehovah there. He offered sacrifice at that altar. After that, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew the trumpet. But before he did that, he was told you've got to deal with the altar at your father's house. These two altars do not stand together. Please, servants of the Lord, the devil's altar and Jehovah's altar cannot stand in the same place. And the Lord spoke to, 
to Gideon. Says, you're going to, to deliver the people. But this is where you begin. You begin by destroying the outer of Baal. That is in your father's house. That is the problem. Gideon, the problem of Israel is that outer. You are saying God is not with you. It's not, the, it's not God's problem. It's the outer that is standing there. So Jehovah cannot be with you because you are worshipping at that altar. He was told you need to destroy it. You've got you, the one going to destroy it. Don't you ever think it was an easy task? He was going to destroy it and also get destroyed. But when God tells you to do something or say something, then say it. Say it and if, and if it happens to you like it happened to Stephen, there will be a witness. So Gideon was the one to take the risk. Please never think that being in the kingdom you will just go without taking risk. You will have to take a risk. Either choose to go with the Lord or experience the benefits down here now. So he did that. He did it at night. You must do it at night. Do it. But let the outer come down. Some of us are having relationships that are outers. Some of us are having friends that are outers. Some of us are businesses that are actual outers to the devil. Some have churches that are outers to the devil. And the Lord says that outer must come down. Says that altar must come down. And Gideon did exactly that. He destroyed that altar to Baal. Because Jehovah cannot be compared with Baal. And Jehovah and Baal cannot operate at the same place. And when he built that altar to the Lord, the people in the morning woke up because he built an altar. He destroyed the altar of Baal and built an altar to Jehovah and offered the bull that was supposed was being kept by the father. I don't know whether for sacrifice or whatever it was, but to offer to God, but he offered it to Jehovah. Wake up in the morning. The bull is missing. It's, the altar is missing. It's another altar to Jehovah. Who has done this? You will not be hidden. Whatever you're doing for God, you're not hidden. They said it can't be anyone else. Because the people that walk in the light are known. If you walk in the light, it is known. This is the person that walks in the light. If you walk in darkness, it is known you walk in the darkness. They said the only person that would have done this is Gideon. Oh yes, they said it's Gideon. And they said Gideon must die right now. They told the father... Bring out your son because he must die. The father said, it can never be that. Go, get to that. If Baal is God, my son never destroyed any of your altars. He destroyed the altar of Baal. So if Baal is God, let him fight for his altar. And the people were silenced by the former worshiper of Baal. He has realized that Jehovah is God. Because Gideon has thrown the altar down. He wakes up, he finds the altar is down and Gideon is still alive. That's what's going to happen in your life. The altar will be down but you will still be alive. Glory to the name of Jesus Christ. So Gideon then blew the trumpet. When he blew the trumpet, people came. Thousands. Thousands came. Why did they come? They came. They came because they had the voice of a trumpet. Because all it says all the Amalekites, all the Midianites, all the children of the east is verse 33. They all pitched in the valley of Jezreel. But the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon and he blew the trumpet. 
and Abiezel was gathered to him. So Gideon, he tested God. He did a test with God. I'm not telling you to do that. Unless God speaks to you the same way. The Lord, chapter 7, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee, he has multitude. Hallelujah. There is revival. There is revival. God has come down. Thousands. Gideon feels good. Man, I have such an army. Thousands. Because I'm facing thousands, I also need thousands. <laughs> and the Lord says in verse 2, And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest these revolt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand has, has saved me. <laughs> so God looks at Gideon, tells me, tells him, These people are too many. There are too many for me to deliver the, the Midianites and the rest of the armies to you. And so he thought, Go. Gideon doesn't agree with that. They appear too many, but the people out there are even many more. There are many more, and God says these are too many. So God tells him, go and announce. Go and announce that whosoever is afraid, if you have fear in your heart, whoever is afraid, let him go back. Let him go back to his wife. As if he had passed him, did you nearly find a Jacoba? Let him go back. Now, Gideon had men of uh, men, men fighters who were there surrounding him, thousands. He could not believe his eyes when he saw some of the biggest, some of the non fighters walking back, going home to their wives. At least I never had, knew I would have a chance to go back to my family alive. They are so thankful to God for the announcement. 22,000 went back. Gideon could not believe it. If it were you, you would not have believed it. Why did they come in the first place if they were so much full of fear? They went back. And God shocks Gideon. He says, these people are still too many. They are too many for me to give you victory with them. And he was told, take them to the water. We're going to test them there. And God tells him, when, I, when you take them there, you, as you test them, I'll tell you, this one will go, this one will remain. And they were, to, they were thirsty people. He took them to the water. Some fell on their knees, worshipped the water, and drank it. But there were some men that would get the water with their hands put it in their mouth and they are looking around they did not fall on the water like these men that said how can this be water and they keep their weapons aside to drink water he was told you have some watchful people drinking the water and looking around to see if the enemy could be there but those were only 300 God tells him, with those 300, I'm going to give you the victory. I wanted to tell you today, the solution to what is facing you is not going to be the natural solution. God will use his power to demonstrate his greatness in your life. Only 300 men remained. And God 
tells him, it is with those 300. And they were to use their lamps. They were to use their containers of water that they were carrying. And they were to use their trumpets. 300 men against thousands and thousands. I don't have time to read the whole story. But the 300 were the ones that God used. And Gideon overpowered them. And you know before that happened, God, I'm sure he was still not sure what was going to happen. The Lord tells him, go to the army of the Midianites. You hear what they say. And he hears somebody telling a dream. And he says, they, one decided to interpret and said, this is nothing but the sword of Gideon and of, of, of God. Because God has given the armies to Gideon. God has given the armies to the saints. Listen, people. God has given the armies of the kingdom of darkness to the saints. God has given you victory. It's not going to happen in the natural way. The problem with you is you've been expecting the natural way. The way God blessed so and so. The way God did this to so and so. You've been expecting it to happen that way. But you are not that person. God is going to use supernatural means to perform miracles in your life. God will do it. God will do it. He will not use the army. He will not use the 22,000. If the 32,000, he will not use the 10,000. He will use the 300. And the victory that is going to be there is going to be great victory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So today I want you to know God wants to bring the victory like he did with Gideon. He will get you that victory. But he will use supernatural power. Because these men blew with their trumpets. They broke those containers of water. And they shouted the, the sword of Gideon, God and, and, and of Gideon. And there was victory. How do you get victory? Just by shouting. It happened because God gave them that method. God will give you a method for your business, a method for your family, a method for your future. There is going to be a method that God is going to give you. It's not going to be the natural one. It will be given by the Lord. The Lord's formula will never fail. Listen, child of God. The formula God is going to give you will not fail. Your status is going to change. Not in the natural way, but God is going to cause it to change because he is the almighty God. God will send miracles in your life because he's able. But follow the instruction. Learn to listen to what God is saying. Because what God is saying will definitely and surely come to pass without faith. Hallelujah. So why are you scared? Why are you afraid when you have a God like this who left you the record of Gideon so that when you read it you may know that Jehovah cannot fail? Why are you crying then? Why are you telling sinners what problems you are having when you could tell with God, tell God and settle with God because God will never fail you. God can never fail. I say again, God can never fail. May his name be glorified. May God come. Let God come. That's what the psalmist was saying. Let God arise. Let God arise. And I'm saying let God arise in your life. Let his enemies be scattered. These were thousands and thousands of armies. These were, there were generals, many generals. But they were all scattered by the voice of 300 people. 301 people, including Joshua. 
Victory was won. Victory has already been won on your side by the Lord God Almighty. There is a way. There is a way. It is not the 32,000. Listen. Some of you are so disappointed because the 32,000 is not there. You blew the trumpet and they didn't come 32,000. Only 300 came. Only 300. <laughs> Our strength is not in the multitude that we have. It's not the people that are behind you. It's if Jehovah is on your side. Those who are behind you, because they came, they were behind Gideon. He faced them and he said, if there is any one of you that is scared, let him go back. And Gideon could not believe his eyes. Can you imagine what the man felt? He thought there were going to be about 200. 200 people that are scared. But he says, those of you that are scared, please go back. And it's like the majority, the majority go back. So what are you left with? You are left with the Lord's system. You are left with the Lord's way of doing it. You are left with people that appear like they will not be able to do it. But they will do it. God will work it out his way. I'm calling on the church today. Let's do it the Lord's way. We can only do it the Lord's way. Because we are scared. We are taught this. We are taught you are going to be off this corona because of there's going to be these, uh, what? The vaccines. And then we are told the vaccines will kill you. So you don't know, go for it or wait here and die. But we have a better way. We have the way of the Lord. We have the way of the Lord. God's way will not fail us. The Lord will sustain us by his mighty power. God will sustain your family by his mighty power. The Lord will sustain your business by his own power. The Lord will sustain your children. Because parents, you don't know what you don't know what to say. You don't even know how to pray. You've got to pray, oh God, I pray that he doesn't meet, meet some of these cunning, wicked people. Because they they meet him, give him money, shake, get him a car, and he's gone. But we call upon the name of the Lord. There is the better way. There is the better way. We are not going to be defeated. We shall overcome. We will stay on the Lord's side and listen to what the Lord is saying. What is Jehovah saying? And he is going to speak to you. The Lord will speak to you. You just need to learn to listen. Sit and be still. And listen, because he will speak to you. The Lord will speak to you. The Lord is leading you on the way to victory. Because you are his child. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Glory to the name of the Lord. I will ask that we all stand before the Lord. Hallelujah.